So I would like to uh, just share and point out some of the what I feel and what I'm learning, um, what makes it a visual signature regionally um, is uh, to some of the shapes um, of the eyes, of the, the nose, the mouth, the, the split use, the feather designs, uh, what's distinct about the, ovular, the circular and ovular shapes compared to the ovoid shapes that are more northern for example, um, tamuk, uh, kingfisher. So this is a piece that I'm in progress and I'm depicting a kingfisher. Um, so it's, it's uh, the old pieces, they would, they were great at, and this is my, my view on it, is, is their, the artists were, very connected to nature and they studied it, respected it, lived right in it and as we move on you know we're further and further away from nature a lot of the times um, but the one thing that I feel that was great is how they would for neutronals they would have the the shape and this you know could pull your eye around the piece if, I, if they paint this. So this is just pencil line so far, but if it's painted, it's soft and flowing. But one uh, visual distinction is um, how then it would go to maybe a harder, you know, reference of a ge geometric, uh, the harder lines that are in the in the design. But it still, uh, it still goes and it feels balanced. At least that's what I'm, you know, I'm trying to. That's what I'm trying to um, emulate, I guess. And it's and it's going to change. It's going to, uh, you know, um, it will change and evolve because it's it's my hand. It's not, you know, it's something that I'm consciously or subconsciously inspired by. Uh, whether it's an old piece or something another artist is doing and I'm doing, uh, I'm inspired by that or, you know, I, you know, society just moves so quickly, but, you know, our art form, so the, uh, another distinction is the softer ovals and the star shapes and the, this uh, softer curve but it's still a hard line and it's just soft and it's, it pulls your eye around the piece um, and that softer shape of that U shape um, that uh, the softer U shape that uh, is repetitive um, in the in the artwork um, in th throughout the pieces. And uh, I, I'm always a real fan and a real student of the older pieces that the shape may be symmetrical, but the design is asymmetrical. And in my thoughts are, are the ones that make you, make you work for it and, and it's not, um, it doesn't stand out right away, right away that the design is asymmetrical. Um, that's what I'm a real fan of, and, and uh, you know, and, and I'll. There's some current artist today, a new channel artist that I'll look at, and I'm a fan of it, and I could, it just I'm really drawn to it, and but I can't exactly sometimes explain it to someone why I'm. It uh, has that great flow and feeling, and then you know there's even a piece that simple, a simple soap berry spoon from uh, uh, another artist that's been carving for probably as you know as long as I've been alive. And he's uh, Joe David from Cloquit, uh, a simple soap berry spoon that I was always a fan of, and I would look at it and look at it and look at it, and it wasn't until probably a, 
maybe almost two years later, I seen another, another part of a design in that same soapberry spoon that I and uh, that I've been looking at and admiring for a long time. And some people might just look at it and go, "Oh, it's a real simple design." But if they were to try and emulate it or duplicate it, it would, I think, it would be, uh, you know, it would be quite the challenge that they would try and figure out what, why, why can't I do this simple, this simple thing? Um, so uh, another artist friend of mine said, you know, you, you only see what you know. So that's what um, I'm here today just to try and share with uh, individuals that what makes it a visual signature of a neutronal piece. Um, if we go over to this uh, sun mask that I'm working on here, um, you know, what I'm, what I'm, learning and studying is you know the, the depths and then the shape of the nose how it's angled up a bit if you looked at the profile you would see that that this is has a bevel to it and then what i've been studying is that softer u shape and trying to to have that in the piece the softer you know, if you look at this, this is a U shape here. This is a U shape here. It's continuous, and then and then this U U shape or tessellation pattern of the split U's, how they're, you know, they're it's just continuous and it's it's uh, but it's soft and flowing, but yet, you know, harder harder lines coming into a sharp point. It's uh, yeah, it's in. I share, I share with a number of artists um, that are, you know, painting or drawing or carving. Um, if they're wine and they have neutronal roots, I really point out, you know, that um, just complementary, you know, complementary shapes to keep it, keep it flowing. Um, that on those old neutronal pieces are very much a regionally a signature style. So this is an example of different region, um, how close uh, the eye is to the eyebrow and then going right from this, this level of, to this plane, this bevel, angling it down is more of a northern uh, clog youth or even up further up north, I believe, uh, more Haida Gwaii style of that this height is almost the same, and then it bevels down to, to what was shared with me from northern artists. Um, that makes it that regional signature of that style. So, uh, but yeah, so this was uh, uh, late, uh, late John Livingston started this uh, piece. And uh, he's, uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us and many, many artists and collectors are um, probably miss him a great deal. This is um, a more recent piece that I started last year. So this is uh, my depiction of a sun and Koshin, the, ra the raven. But um, so we have the softer flowing lines, you know, referred to as the form line. Um, but then again, the harder, the harder lines of the geometrics. Again, the softer U shapes, ovals, that angle or bevel of the nose, depth and angle of the brow line, the circular rather than ovoid, oval rather than ovoid, which is more northern. So this is a neutronal. Myself trying to study and, and pay attention to our, you know, all the earlier pieces. I'm, I'm still trying to develop and, and my, for myself and be be more of a visual signature of that region. This material was, was a surprise find for me up on the mountain. Um, you know, I'm always uh, trying to um, have material in hand for, for things that I'm wanting to create, things that are, people may want to commission. Um, so my uh, good friend and I were up on the mountaintop and uh, 
two friends of mine actually, and and uh, I seen this uh, large um, weathered uh, piece of material sticking out of the tree line of this old logged area, and I thought, wow, like how could they leave such a big cedar behind? Like it was just, it just looked amazing. It was all silver and weathered, but I knew there was. I cut into it, and it just looked white. Um, and I was like, and there's a reference of, because uh, cedar comes in so many shades of like this, even this chocolate and this pinky color and, uh, and then a white color. So I just thought when I cut into it, it was a blonde cedar is a phrase that they use. Um, and then as I started cutting, I didn't have the aroma of cedar. So I, I grabbed the shavings and I smelled, and I was like, that's pine. So it's high elevation pine and my friend didn't want to bring it. He's like, well, there's no, I, I came here for cedar. And I'm like, well, I said, this, this will be great. I said, you know, I carved a little bit, whittled a little bit when I was with my grandfather when I was a little boy and he would carve pine. Um, so this is, um, a high elevation pine is, is the term that my grandfather would call it when, when I was a boy. Um, so that's why the color um, is this kind of rosy color. And then all the oil, it's just so rich in oil that all of these little dots are oil, the natural oils in the, in the material. Um, but yeah, so again, I was just, you know, I'm, I'm wanting to um, you know, use, you know, there's, there's going to be a time where, you know, probably in, you know, I would like to think in my lifetime that cedar is, you know, it's, you know, the first growth, old, old growth cedar is, is becoming more and more rare, um, that we're going to have to adapt as West Coast artists on, you know, um, what we're using, whether we're going to use another material or it's going to be an engineered material. Like for example, the rim is engineered, like it's laminated. It's a bunch of boards that are laminated together to make it more stable. Um, so, so that's a, you know, that's another reality for myself and, and, you know, any artists that are may you know, maybe interested in, in uh, creating pieces and, you know, totem poles might be, they might be engineered and laminated um, 20 years. You know, we're, we're pretty fortunate to live where we live um, and still have access to some really, really beautiful, beautiful, uh, old growth that, that you can, you know, that there's not a blemish or flaw, which uh, a lot of society looks at it as. And, and, um, and I, I look at it, it's, it's, it's all beautiful. Um, uh, you know, for example, this, this mask I'm working on, it, it, one thing with cypress, yellow cedar, it's, you, you can look at it and you think it's, it's so, you know, the term flawless and clean. And then you cut into it and there's like, you know, almost like a dozen knots, dozen, you know, that, you know, as it grew, it disappeared. And, you know, on the, it's so slow growing at high elevation that it, you know, there's no, inclination on the exterior of that, you know, once you get past the bark and sapwood, you're just thinking, wow, this is going to be so clear and it's straight. You can see that it's straight. And then you cut into it and there's like, you know, there was full of knots and, and I tend to two things. I think, I think one, I'm like, well, I could toss it aside and get a piece that is completely clear and you know flawless but i look at it as it's still beautiful and and then i take it as a, 
somewhat of a personal challenge um, because this had like three knots here, a knot here, a remnants of a knot here that I just got past, one here, one up here, and then these two here and this one here that are still still on the piece. And you know, some people may think and look at that as, oh, it's flawed. Or if a crack, a check happens, they're like, well, you know, you, you're going to create this for, for us. You, you, there's not going to be any cracks in it, right? I'm like, well, if you don't want any cracks, we should make it out of metal, you know? Because um, it's, it's nature, it's alive. It's going to have, uh, it will have movement. And so this add, add a couple little check, a uh, couple little checks, you know, one here and one up here and two little ones here and and that's that's fine you know I, I you know I do my best to take care of it and um, I, I kind of have this phrase you know I talk nice to it you know uh, because I you know I don't want it to I don't want it to you know there's an old old uh, Tsimshan artist he said oh yeah you know that when it's bigger yellow cedar it's a cranky wood he says and I'm like, and I, I just laughed. I said, yeah, I guess it, you could look at it that way. Or, it, you know, maybe it's telling you, you know, get busy, um, pay attention and get busy um, and tend to it. You know, cypress, larger cypress, yellow cedar and alder, you really have to tend to it. And even high elevation pine, there's one over in the corner over there that I have it completely bagged, even though it's soaking wet. And I could have it outside, it still wants to move and check and crack. So, and I'm doing my best just to go, okay, you, I'll move, remove as much material as quickly as I can, and then I'm gonna try and encapsulate it just so that it sits dormant. Um, and then when I get back to it, I'll, you know, even I have a, a designated alder freezer. A freezer full of alder blocks, that, and uh, you know I've started projects, and I, I, when I'm working on them, I'll keep them in there, and then I'll take it out, you know, a day before that I'm going to start, you know, give it a day to to thaw, and then I'll start carving it again. Um, so yeah, you know, just the the patience for it, and the, that whole approach on on the material, because like I say, you. You know, I could, you know, I, ha I had two pieces of this same uh, scale. One was not a knot on it, the other half of this. And this side was full, of, and I could have just, like I said, put this one aside and went and carved the one that has no knots. But I look at our future too, and I'm like, well, fast forward 15 years from now, they're, you know, my, my good friends that think, oh, you know, that it's too much of a hassle to deal with that. They, you know, fast forward 15 years from now, they might be going, oh, yeah, well, we could work with that. Their, their mindset is going to have to change just because it's just the reality of it. You know, as, as artists, we're trying to create something for ourselves, but we're trying to put it, you know, it's a pretty personal thing and you're putting it out there to the public and you're not going to make everyone happy. Um, but you know, you gotta, you know, as my grandmother used to say, you know, it's water off your back, right? In 2005, I was fortunate enough to be one of, uh, one of uh, three students that were chosen to, to uh, be students of Tim Paul leading um, a project for two totem poles at the Tsushot Market just up the road from where the gallery is here. And uh, we went down to select um, cedars on Zardus Island down Berkeley Sound. And we went down in a water taxi. My grandfather, they wanted my grandfather to go down to uh, Tsikta to do a blessing as the cedars that we chose. And he was, oh, how old would he have been? He would have been probably about, uh, 80. So he was just starting to have trouble with his legs. 
but he still, you know, he, he had two canes and he, he, you know, got out of that water taxi onto a dock and ramp, walked up the ramp and he was just shaking his head and he's like, we hop into this crummy, this crew cab pickup truck. He closes the door and he says, I never ever thought I would be driving, riding in a vehicle on this island. He goes, I used to trap mink on this island when I was a little boy. He would trap mink and, and take the pelts and, and sell them for, you know, when he was a little boy, because that was his, part of his contribution to the family, uh, to the family on, the, on, on uh, Keith Island. Um, but yeah, that just, you know, stuck with me and it made me, made me think of, yeah, man, the, the changes that he witnessed. Um, you know, we think about what we, what we witnessed, but that generation, what they witnessed and the changes were just so advanced, so quick, so, uh, but yeah. Um, and still in all that, you know, him, doing a blessing for, you know, I felt very fortunate that, uh, you know, he was still willing to, to do that um, and the importance of that. There is that, you know, wanting to have that connection for myself, that connection with nature and, and stopping and looking at the cedar boughs, the ferns, uh, the creeks and, and the stones. I spent, you know, a lot of time down to Shaw, you know, I'm a shot. That's me explaining that I come from uh, down Barkley Sound, Benson Island is where our roots are from. And I was fortunate enough that my, my grandfather grew up down uh, in Keith Island, Village Island, in, in, our, in our traditional territory. And he would, you know, long weekends, spring break, summertime, we, we spent so much time down there. And, you know, a lot of my pieces are you know, experiences of being on the water with my grandfather. Um, you know, a number of pieces that I've created over the years. I've, you know, landmarkers, um, witnessing whales and seals and herring. Um, and then just, you know, you know, it, it could be pouring rain and we would just be, you know, laughing and, and you know, um, we were just in a little 16 foot open aluminum boat in the elements and it was, that was just normal and it was great. I feel very, very fortunate to have had that upbringing and that experience. Mm -hmm.